from our Chicago studios, this is the Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. We're bringing you a special bulletin with the latest updates on the current situation in Palestine. Assalamu alaikum, I'm Samara Siddiqui. Our top story tonight, a Muslim child of Palestinian descent has been stabbed to death in a Chicago suburb. It is the first murder in the United States related to the ongoing Israel-Palestine conflict. A landlord on Saturday stabbed to death the six-year-old son of Muslim tenants in the Chicago suburb of Plainfield. 71-year-old Joseph Zuba choked the child's mother and stabbed her, screaming, you Muslims must die. When she ran into the bathroom to call 911, she came out to find that Zuba had stabbed her six-year-old son to death. His name was Wadia Al-Fayume. His mother, Hanan Shaheen, has been hospitalized. The father of the boy says the landlord killed his son and attacked his mother because he was angry with what he was seeing in the news. Imam Abdul Malik Mujahid, president of Justice for All, commenting on the hate crime, called on President Joe Biden to personally apologize for his statement about Palestinians killing babies. The fake killing babies propaganda has allowed the murder of more than 700 Palestinian children in the last eight days and has now killed a six-year-old right here in America. Killing babies as blood libel was propaganda used by the Nazis against Jews. This is now being applied to Palestinians struggling for freedom under apartheid, Imam Mujahid added. Mainstream media outlets in Chicago, specifically ABC Chicago and NBC Chicago, reported the news making no mention of the murder's connection to Israel's ongoing violence in Gaza. BBC World Affairs editor John Simpson has defended the organization's policy of not referring to Hamas as terrorists. This stance has been met with criticism from various quarters, including British government officials and the public. Simpson emphasized the BBC's commitment to avoid using what it called loaded terms like evil or cowardly and refrain from labeling groups as terrorists. He pointed out that many reputable news organizations around the world also follow this policy. The primary reason behind this approach, according to Simpson, is rooted in the principles of not dictating public opinion or classifying groups as good or bad. Instead, their mission is to present facts to the audience and allow individuals to form their own judgments. For full disclosure, Muslim Network also avoids using such labels unless quoting a statement. An estimated one million Gazans have been displaced in the first seven days of conflict with Israel, according to the United Nations Agency supporting Palestinian refugees. Aid groups say the situation in the besieged enclave is catastrophic. Israel has killed more than 3,000 Palestinians since October 7th in Gaza, with 724 of them being children and 55 who have been killed by the Israeli military and armed Israeli settlers in the occupied West Bank. Israelis also claim killing 1,500 Palestinian fighters who invaded Israel. Hamas's attack and its aftermath have killed about 1,400 Israelis. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has become the first Western leader to voice deep concern over the growing humanitarian catastrophe unfolding in Gaza. In a statement released by his office, Canada expressed its unwavering commitment to addressing the dire humanitarian situation in Gaza. Trudeau called for respect for human rights principles and ensuring the protection of civilians, journalists, humanitarian workers and medical personnel in the region. The Canadian government has pledged an initial commitment of $10 million in humanitarian assistance. Saudi Arabia has decided to put on hold its plans to normalize relations with Israel, a move that had heavy backing from the United States. The decision comes in response to the escalating conflict between Israel and Hamas. Saudi Arabia has also taken steps to move closer to Iran over the last few days. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman held his first telephone conversation with Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi. Saudi Arabia has refused to condemn last Saturday's attack by Hamas, despite pressure from Washington. That's all from our Chicago studios tonight. Thank you for tuning in. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for the latest updates. For more content, keep watching Muslim Network TV or visit muslimnetwork.tv. Salam and good night.